Virgins on Wedding Night. My name is Olushegun Mokuolu. This message is intended for those who are going to get married soon or who are just recently married, who married as virgins or who married without real sexual experience. If you have married as virgins, congratulations. And if you are planning to marry as a virgin, I pray that the Lord would keep you. If you have repented of your sin, having had sex in the past, and God is helping to keep you, I also encourage you that you also keep yourself till you get married. Now, there are a few instructions that it's important that you get to know, which you may not hear uh, often in church. I'm sure you are aware that I am speaking to Christians. I'm speaking to believers who, are, who have kept themselves, who are married. It's possible that uh, the two of you are virgins. It's also possible that one is a virgin, one is not. You could also have a situation where one is not a virgin, but it's also not experienced. Or you have a situation where the two of you are not virgins, but you are not really experienced uh, sexually. Here are an instructions that I believe the Lord will want you to know when you get married or if you are just newly married. One is that if you are a virgin, it could be a little painful. Not necessarily always, but it could be a little painful. There could be blood and um, there may not be blood. The man in particular must learn to be extremely patient and to be extremely loving. Then you need to know that the first few times, it may not likely be great. Sex may not be what you have been reading about. It's not likely to be what you have been hearing about. So when you have sex, you are likely to say to yourself, is this what they've always been talking about? Now, I want you to be patient. Understand that it will get better. Your sexual life will get better. Many people have been tempted this way because once they get married and they didn't find that expectation, the devil starts suggesting to them that it's their partner and maybe they need to now look for it elsewhere. Don't fall for that blackmail. Understand that it will only get better with time. Sex, like every other thing, gets better. Uh, practice makes perfect. That's the same thing with sex. There's no way you are going to have sex for the first time and it's going to be great. No, but it's going to eventually get better as you go. Now, the woman is not somebody that is automatically wet. So the man must understand that she's not automatically wet. She requires some time to be wet. There are times that um, once you start, she could just be wet. She could even be wet before you, you even start, depending on her mindset and so on. But it's not automatic. Don't just expect that the vagina is a ready sex machine that you can go in anytime and it's always wet. No, the vagina is not like that. The vagina can actually be dry. It could be dry. The same thing in erection. You know, when we are much younger, you will discover that you have erection easily. And particularly when you are excited, you have erection. And the woman must understand this. You know, as you go on in marriage, you have seen everything. You have done everything. The man really needs excitement to, be, um, to have erection. And the excitement will not definitely be as great as before responsibilities and so on could also affect his erection like the way it will affect the woman too you could get tired the only difference is that when a woman is tired she can even still manage to have sex even if she's not wet lubricant can be used but when a man is tired it's difficult because he must have erection first before he can have sex and erection uh, requires a man to be in good physical state and good state of mind to have erection so understand all of this i'm sharing this with you because you may not have people share them with you and it may be creating uh problems for you when a man becomes engrossed with a lot of responsibilities in the family uh, he may relegate sex to the background although in some cases some men they are ever interested in sex no matter what they are going to but it's not always 
understand that it's not always. There are men that uh, the, the, what they consider to be important issues of life may truly occupy their mind. That's why it's good that um, you, you study each other. Okay, There are those that, that, that could be a partner that would love to have sex last in the night. The other partner may be the opposite because he is completely tired or she is completely tired. So she prevents it either in the morning, in the afternoon. So you, you may need to work out all of those things and understand each other's timing and learn to uh, balance it. Uh, many of the sex stories you will hear are over-exaggerated. People will describe sex to you as if somebody had gone to heaven and come back. But it is just sex. Okay? It is just sex. Only Christ truly satisfies. Jesus said, when you drink of the water I will give you, you will not thirst again. But when you drink of this, you will thirst again. No matter how great sex is, you will want to have sex again. So sex is never truly satisfying. It just provides temporary relief and pleasure. But Jesus is true satisfaction. That's why you must pursue Jesus. Many are trying to fill in the emptiness of Christ in their life with sex. Sex, no matter how great, will never satisfy you. Keep going from one woman to another. Just ask Solomon. After 1,000 women, he said all is vanity. So I don't think you need to go that path again. Somebody has gone there and has said it is vanity. Then no shame in sex. Don't be ashamed. All your life, you've been covering your body. (laughs) You've been covering everything. Now, when you get married, let there be no shame. Remove that mindset. Remove it completely. The Bible said the man and the woman, they they were naked but they were not ashamed. Let there be no shame. Enjoy each other's body. Enjoy what God um, had given you. Explore each other's body. As a woman, you have three parts that are very key to your sex, uh, to your sex life, or, or maybe four parts that are really key to your sex life, four parts that are key. The man must understand it. The woman must understand it. Your breast, your clitoris, your G-spot, and your erogenous zone. Your erogenous zone is unique to you. For some women, it is their air. For some women, it is their leg. For some, it's their hand. For some, it's their neck. For some, it's their air. Maybe a blowing into their ears or just uh, kissing their ears and so on. So, those four key parts, you must understand it and learn how to exploit it uh, in marriage. The man is basic. <laughs> Men are really, really, really uh, basic. That's why as a man, You must ensure that your greatest satisfaction sexually comes from the orgasm of the woman. You must learn that discipline and that patience and have that grace to ensure that she experiences orgasm regularly when you have have sex. So you must understand how to exploit those four parts. Now, God didn't give us any sexual style. So be free in your marriage to... Uh, enjoy your sex life the way you want to enjoy. Don't allow anybody to impose their personal opinion uh, on you. There is no divine sex style. Okay? Have sex uh, the way the two of you want to uh, have sex. Somebody may not like something. Doesn't mean you should now turn it into a message and be preaching it. Okay? Enjoy each other uh, in marriage. Now, don't be ashamed to ask for sex, particularly the sister. You know, all along, you enjoy being pursued. (laughs) You are now married, so feel free to ask for sex. You know what that does is that most women don't ask, they don't know how to ask for sex, but most men do. When a man wants sex, he makes it absolutely clear. When a woman wants sex, she's behaving somehow, you know, so the man can even pretend that he doesn't know. But that makes it that when the body of the woman really, really wants sex, she doesn't get it. When the body of the man wants sex, he gets it. So the man is more sexually satisfied. So as a woman, when your own body too wants sex, demand it, ask for it. Because you will enjoy sex most at the time when your body really wants it. Do not be ashamed to go to God in prayer to help your sex life. I've particularly seen this in my own sex life, in marriage. Go to God in prayer. Ask him. 
Lord, I'm not having orgasm. I don't know what I need to do. Lord, I'm, I can't satisfy my wife. Please help me. Go to God in prayer. God is interested in every aspect of your life. He created sex and you have kept yourself. So go to God in prayer. God will help you. You have repented of your sin, even if you have sinned before. So God will help you. So involve God in it. Be contented. Okay? Bible says having food and raiment, we should be contented. It says godliness with contentment is great gain. In sex too, you must learn to be contented. Husband, be contented with the uh, size of your wife's breast. Otherwise, the devil will tell you that it is too small or it is too big, it is too flat or it is too high or it is too deep. Be contented with whatever you have. Wife, also be contented with whatever God has blessed your husband with. Be contented with your sex life. Contentment is a Christian virtue, not only expressed in uh, other areas outside of sex. Sexually, be contented to understand that devil will tempt you. So know this ahead of time. The devil will tempt you. He will suggest things to you. He will suggest that the sex could be great. He will show you people, make you hear stories of how people are having great sex and so on. And you are like, ha, is it the same thing that we are doing? And so on. So you must be aware. So that's why I don't give room for what I call vacuum emotion. Be there for each other. And then more importantly, stand with Jesus. Because if you are expecting your spouse to be your happiness, he will not be able to be your happiness. Because Jesus should actually be. So the devil will suggest somebody to you. He will bring somebody to you that will appear to be caring. And if care is not taken, you will give in to such a person. Both as a man or as a woman. So you must stick with your wife. Uh, hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. Realize that you will not have sex forever. Even as you get older, you may even reduce, your sex life may reduce rather. You know, so understand that, that only Jesus truly satisfies. Let your marriage focus more on fulfilling the purpose that God has brought the two of you together. Not simply on sexual pleasure that is only temporary. But I feel that it's important that I bring this instruction to you. I pray the Lord himself will give you good understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. My name once again is Olusegun Mukuolu. You may want to share this message with Christian singles or those who are newly wedded. Uh, and um, you may consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. In case you want to speak with me or maybe seek clarification, my number is plus 234-818-615-7852. My contact details you will also find in the description uh, on the YouTube channel. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.